Hello everyone, it's Friday, September 8th. I'm David Song, Currency Analyst with Daily FX, here to cover Canada's employment report. And uh, we are looking for another 15K expansion this time around after we did get some weaker than expected figures uh, for the previous month's reading. So uh, current market expectations right now. And we will look at the overall data, uh, data frontier as we will watch that or currently market expectations are looking for the jobless rate to hold steady and annualize 6.3%. And again, employment expect to increase another 15K. Uh, but before we move on, guys, as always, uh, just a bit of house cleaning here. For everyone that signed up for today's coverage, you do have access to IG demo accounts. So feel free to check that out at your own leisure. But, you know, we'll see how all this will fit in with uh, the volatility that we're seeing across the currency market, uh, I would even argue, in some of the other financial markets. Um, but we did get the Bank of Canada interest rate hike, um, the second one this year, and it looks as though they're not done in terms of the normalization cycle. So we'll see if we get um, maybe a meaningful market reaction this time around. If we do see some positive figures here, may heighten the bullish sentiment, the shift in market behavior, if you will, that we're seeing surrounding dollar CAD. Uh, but we'll also keep a close eye on, again, the dynamics where, you know, a lot of, uh, if you haven't been watching the breakdown of these figures, a lot of the gains have been led by full-time positions. Uh, we'll see if that will continue. We'll see if that will reinforce, uh, again, or encourage the Bank of Canada to further normalize monetary policy going forward. Uh, but in terms of the U.S. front, not much uh, until we get to some comments from Mr. Patrick Harker, uh, Philadelphia Fed president, a voting member on the FOMC this year. So he's the last one that we'll get in terms of Fed commentary until we get to the rate decision on September 20th, right? So uh, Fed officials are going to enter this quiet period right before they get to the interest rate decision before the policy meeting. So we'll watch some of the U.S. data on tap next week. Uh, we also have the Swiss National Bank, who's not expected too much, but we also have the Bank of England on tap, uh, Bank of England along with some key U.K. data prints. So we'll see how that will all fare for the week ahead. We'll see how candidate will fare in just a little bit. Um, but let's take a quick look here in terms of you know, what's happening. I have my charts on the wrong side, guys. So, uh, in terms of what's been happening with DollarCAD, uh, again, I've been talking about this change in behavior, if, we'll, if you will. And you know, I think the euro, as well as the DollarCAD, you know, are the ones that are showing this change in behavior more prominently. And I think the key thing to take away as we're kicking off or as we're coming back from the summer lull, as we're seeing market, partic market participation return, I think a lot of people had this trend line on their charts. I know pretty much everyone here at Daily Effects, we've been watching this trend line from back in 2012, but you know, has it finally broken down? And I know uh, after the Bank of Canada rate hike that we had earlier this week, which was a bit of a surprise, right? Majority of economists pulled by Bloomberg News, you know, they were projecting a hold. Uh, but we've got this nice break here, and um, it looks like we might continue to the downside. So, you know, I think we're testing some near-term levels right now. I have 120.80, 120.70. Uh, I'll be personally watching those levels. And don't forget, yesterday we cracked the lows from back in July, uh, excuse me, June of 2015. And it looks like we're going to quickly approach those lows from back in May. So they do line up with some of the lows that I've been watching or some of the Fibonacci extensions that I have on my radar. But, you know, one thing to keep in mind, and I think this is the part that I've stressed here with Dollar Candid, and again, we'll see what's going to happen with the data. We'll see if the Bank of Canada will, in fact, deliver another hike, um, their next one being in October. But, you know, so they may uh, take a bit of pause here before we get uh, another move. But for now, and ahead of the Federal Reserve interest rate decision, one thing I just want to mention here is the RSI. Okay? Uh, we again, are seeing the momentum indicator dip back below 30, which suggests that the bearish momentum will continue. Right? So I need to see the textbook buy definition, right? that move back above 30, to even look for correction. So for now, downside targets remain favored, at least on my end, guys. Not a recommendation from daily effects, just my personal views here. Right? But if we're able to close below 20, 70, 20, 80, you know, going into the end of the week, may open up some more downside risk. And again, personally, I'll be watching those lows that we set from back in May of 2015. Um, and another thing I just want to mention, guys, keep in mind, right, that we haven't seen these readings on RSI, these oversold readings that are starting to last quite some time. Right? We haven't seen those from all the back in 2014. 
So putting all the pieces together here, we've broken some trend lines from last year. We're breaking some longer term trend lines. We're seeing signals in the RSI that we haven't seen since 2014. You know, all suggestive that I think there is a material shift in market behavior and that this may continue, um, not only maybe throughout the remainder of the year, right, but will this continue to be the case in 2018, right? And I want to make the case with the euro here, and we'll see, you know, what the ECB will unveil, right, in autumn. That's apparently when they will make the big decision, right? Um, so everyone's looking at their October reading as well, but, you know, I have to give it up to the euro here. We're making fresh 2017 highs, right? Um, watch that RSI because I think we are starting to get a signal. So again, I was relatively flat on the on the euro um, as we opened up the month here. You know, we spiked higher during the end of the month or end of uh, end of August, but the RSI really struggled to reflect those highs. Right? We got fresh highs in price, but not in the RSI. But hey, maybe it's, it was just coiling up for a move. So it's a little bit encouraging that we're we're trying to see the RSI break out right, as continuation pattern, triangle wedge, whatever you want to call it. But another signal that I want to see is that RSI kick back above 70 which it failed to do when we had that spike in late August. So if we're able to take out those highs, maybe flirt with overbought, maybe kick into overbought, could be suggestive that this bullish momentum, you know, may not be done yet. And, you know, some of the bank research that I've been watching, sort of market consensus is, you know, and especially following the ECB rate decision is, you know, is 120 the sort of tolerance now for the, uh, for the central bank? Um, and again, I know we're here to cover the bank, um, the candidate data here, but I just want to, you know, sort of give you guys my take on the ECB because I think what they said yesterday was meaningful, right? And uh, my personal biggest takeaway from the ECB was the fact that they kept talking about post QE environment, right? So, oh, after QE, guys, this is what's going to happen. We're going to keep rates on, you know, we're going to keep rates low. So, very suggestive, yes, that they are looking at the end of QE error, right? Because they're already talking about what's going to happen afterwards, right? Um, so is it set in so? No, I don't think so. Can they delay it? Of course they can, right? Uh, they full they have the full flexibility to delay the you know, deadline of the QE program, but that was my personal takeaway from the ECB messages. Yes, growth has been better than expected. Inflation, you know, it's been bogged down, but they expect, again, they're still confident that inflation will rise towards 2% target. And more than that, I think, you know, one thing that they, you know, are mentioning about the euro is, yes, they are aware of it, but, you know, for now, uh, I'm not... Uh, I don't think it's become too much of a concern for the ECB, given the recent rhetoric, and at least for now, I think the bullish behavior in the euro may persist, and at the same time, the bullish behavior in CAC. And just one other security I just want to note here, and, and, and all these things I think are happening, right, as we're seeing this you know, really wave of dollar weakness, big wave of dollar weakness, and again, in, in terms of the ICE dollar index here, we're making fresh 2017 lows. Watch the R sign. This one, it's flirting with oversold territory here as well. And you know what? Let's let's do the same take. The ICE dollar index hasn't seen, and, and we had this oversold reading during the summer months. We haven't seen, again, we, we, we flirted with those levels back in 2016, but I don't think we've seen a, a meaningful reading like this I mean, as we've had as of late since, you know, for quite some time. And if you want to go all the way back, since 2012 for the dollar index. You know, that's what I would argue. Yes, we flirted with oversold, you know, try to slip below 30 a couple times over the last couple of years, but you know, in terms of the magnitude of these readings, in terms of the RSI, I would argue, yes, we haven't seen them in quite some time, in a couple of years. Right? So that's my big argument, and, you know, as we're seeing dollar weakness, euro resilience, Canadian dollar strength following Bank of Canada, oops, wrong uh, bit of typo there, keep doing that, uh, watch gold. I think we've had some meaningful developments here during the summer months, and you know that's the one takeaway that I have personally is you know, there was all this uh, sort of noise that uh, you know only the quarterly meetings matter for the Fed. Not much is going to happen in the summer, but I think we got a lot of clarity, you know, on what to expect over the remainder of the year. Like euro strength may continue, and now gold more meaningful attempt to break out of this 2016 trend. You know, after we've cleared that trend from the record highs right, from back in 2011. And also with this one, hey, just be mindful of this. Um, look at that overbought reading. You know, I know we had one early last year, but you know, just be mindful that the RSI I think tells us so much that you know, I know we label it as overbought and oversold, but you know, when I see this sort of dynamic, right, it's very suggestive that the momentum will continue. Right now, we we broke some big hurdles, right? Um, 1297, 1300. I think that was a big level market for watching here. 
right, where we struggled back in April, right, back in June. Right? And this is all at the beginning, and then finally, right, end of August, we break out. Right? So putting all the pieces together, guys, th these are some of the dynamics that I'll watch here ahead of the Federal Reserve um, coming up again on September 20, so they're not next week, but the week after. We have a clear of U.S. data, and I just want to sort of squeeze this in here before we move on, but cable. Um, probably one of my least favorite pairs at the moment right now, um, but Mr. Stanley and I, we were actually just talking about that this morning, is the fact that we have, you know, UK data next week coming up all ahead of the Bank of England, right? So we have UK inflation next week, um, and Mr. Stanley actually mentioned to me that, you know, it, it, it might be interesting, and, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of attention because it's going to come out just days before, you know, the Bank of England meets. We'll see if we get, a, you know, a change in tone here, but my only caveat here, guys, you know, and this is the one thing to keep in mind, um, we finally have filled the vacancies on the BOE, right? Uh, I forget the new board member's name. Uh, David something, I think. Um, I have to look that up again. But we finally have all nine MPC board members on tap for the September meeting. And remember what happened last time around, right? We got that um, we got that seven to one, uh, seven to one, sixty-two split, right? Because uh, we had Miss Kristen Forbes, she left the Monetary Policy Committee. So, you know, this time around, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually get a seven to two split, this sort of growing majority, if you will, at the Bank of England to keep that benchmark interest rate on hold. But again, we'll see, you know, if the inflation report out of the UK next week will spur some volatility here. But all I want to say about cable here, guys, um, it was I was watching this downward trend here on the RSI for quite some time, from all the way back in May, and you know that's where I was really just uh, didn't have too much conviction that cable can, can get too much higher from here. But you know, looks like I was wrong, and you know. We, even though we made those 2017 highs back in August, early August, our site just could not break above 70, but finally, I mean, are we getting that development now? And I just want to mention this here, right? All happening as we're coming out of the summer months, as I think we've gotten some meaningful developments there. And will this trend continue? Right? That's my bigger question. And again, we'll see what the BOE will reveal. We'll see how markets will react to the UK data front next week. Um, but right now, I think the overall theme is dollar weakness and one last one, dollar yen. Watch the breakdown here, guys. Uh, we're making fresh 2017 lows. Uh, personally, I'm attributing this to what's happening with U.S. Treasury yields. I, I wrote a little bit about this yesterday, but watch what's happening with U.S. yields, guys. Uh, this is the 10-year yield. It's make, it has been making fresh yearly lows all week, pretty much. Right? Um, but as we've gotten a lot of mixed language from Fed officials, right? and I'll, uh, and I'll just, I just want to show you this before we move on to the data, but Fed expectations, interest rate expectations are largely pushed back. And again, we'll see what the fresh projections um, from Fed officials will reveal, right? We'll see how that will shape things up for us over the remainder of the year. But again, roughly 70% probability that you know the Fed won't do anything in December. So markets are not looking for three of eight hikes this year anymore. And if we go all the way out to the second quarterly meeting in 2018, it's just about 50-50 on whether or not we can actually get a rate hike by then. Right? So again, guys, we're seeing in, uh, interest rate expectations get pushed out. We're seeing U.S. yields at first 2017 lows. We're seeing the dollar index trade to first 2017 lows. And, you know, some of the currencies that I think are, are definitely benefiting from this environment, euro, where, again, ECB is starting to gradually change their tune. And, of course, Bank of Canada defying expectations this week, largely, I think, and delivering a hike, and it doesn't look as though they're done yet. So, guys, again, we're looking for a 15K increase in Canada employment, jobless rate to hold steady at an annual 6.3%. Uh, and I'll read out the details here. We'll see what's going to happen with the labor force participation rate. So last time around, we actually got a downtick in um, the labor force participation rate, uh, excuse me, downtick in the jobless rate because we saw labor force participation rate decline, right? Discouraged workers were leaving the labor force, if you will, bringing down, right, the headline meaning for, for unemployment. But here we go, guys. Canada employment, 22.2K. Again, 22.2K, so better than expected. Ooh, not too good, though, uh, in terms of the breakdown. So, again, 22.2K for employment, 6.2% 6, 6 for the jobless rate. So another downtick there, but... Participation rate held steady at 65.7. So, again, downtick in the jobless rate. However, the gains in employment were led by part-time uh, part employment. So, part-time employment increased 110.4K, guys. However, 
Full-time positions contracted 88.1K. So um, uh, maybe seasonal factors are, are kicking in, right? End of August or maybe uh, uh, ahead of school year, right? Pick up in hiring maybe. That, that would be my personal sort of guess there. But again, big jump in part-time, uh, leading the, that advance in employment. Again, part-time increased 110.4K, while full-time employment contracted 88.1. So can't say it's that good. And again, we're seeing a bit of chop here in the dollar cat exchange rate, even though the headline meeting for can employment did beat expectations, guys, right? So again, I think this is where... Looking at the details, right, really gives us a better sense of what what's happening here. So, uh, does this really change the picture for the Bank of Canada? I don't think so. I think one figure we really need to watch for Canada will be the inflation figures, right? So we're starting to see um, Canada inflation pick back up. We'll see if that dynamic will continue. But again, very mixed numbers here with Canada employment, guys. Even though the headline reading was better than expected, again. 22.2K, the gain was led by part-time position, and we saw full-time position contract 88.1K. Right? Yeah. Not much of a good reaction here, guys. I personally don't like it. Holding that range high, holding that low just before the data, so it's a lot of chop here. I personally don't like this reaction. Very mixed data here. But again, it's one piece of data. Don't think it's going to do too much in terms of influencing the Bank of Canada's decision going forward. But of course, we'll continue to monitor some of these themes, right? And let's see here for dollar cad. Let me just bring back the daily, guys. Uh, again, just keep in mind of where we are. Oversold reading persists. And as long as that RSI holds below 30, guys, I have to favor the downside, right? And we'll see if we can get this close below 120, 80, 120, 70. Next region of interest I have, again, uh, May 2015 lows followed by that 11890 zone here, which sits just below, again, the lows from May 2015. Yeah, I don't like this reaction at all. Um, but again, guys, we do have Mr. Patrick Harker from the Federal Reserve, who is, again, a 2017 voting member this year. He will be speaking in just a little bit. Um, and again, he's going to be the last one to speak before we enter this sort of quiet period ahead of the Federal Reserve interest rate decision. And for next week, again, we have Bank of England um, chock full of UK data. So I think cable is going to be the one to watch. But any sort of, again, disappointment, if you will, dovishness out of Bank, uh, Bank of England. And again, guys, my personal views here, I think we're going to see this growing majority. Um, my personal take right now, 72 split that we will see the BOE keep that benchmark interest rate on hold next week. Um, but we'll see what the inflation figures will reveal just ahead of, uh, just ahead of that event. Um, for now, I do like what's happening. We're really evolving with cable, given that we're starting to see that RSI break out of the bearish formation here. And we'll see if we get a little bit more of a meaningful push into overbought territory. And, and I have to scroll back a little bit more. And this is what I'm watching. Yeah, we got that push since 2015. And yeah, slight overbought reading. But again, the more meaningful overbought readings, I think, for cable happened only back in 2013, and 20, uh, 2012. So we'll see if some of those themes will come back into play here. And again, maybe not so much you know, based on UK factors, but you know, what's happening with the dollar? Right? And again, what's happening with US Treasury yields? Are these going to continue to be key themes here? And you know, even though the Fed's normalizing monetary policy, or appears to be on course too, right? <laughs> we'll see if the 10 year is actually going to break below 2%. Right? I think that's going to be a, a key headline figure, big round figure, if you will. Uh, that markets will try to uh, see. And again, we haven't visited right, those levels since pre-U.S. election. Right? So guys, with that, and again, given the sort of lackluster reaction here, I'll just leave it there uh, with the dollar CAD. And again, we'll watch what the BOE will reveal next week, chock full of U.K., as well as U.S. data as well. We have U.S. retail sales, U.S. consumer prices, I believe, as well. So we'll put the piece together next week, guys. I'll be back next Wednesday uh, to answer more questions, to do another sort of overview on some of the key themes that I'm watching. But with that, guys, enjoy the weekend. Um, hope you enjoy the coverage here, despite, again, the lackluster market reactions. Uh, but with that, with all that out of the way, have a great weekend, everyone, um, and I hope to see you all again next week.